5.4 rational equations. So now we got those fractions, but now it equals something. Excellent. So yeah, but the good news is we know how to solve these. We just gotta make them equal to zero. So solving equations containing rational expressions, clear the equations of fractions by multiplying both sides of the equations by the LCD. We're just, that just means we're gonna force all the denominators to match and uh, all rational expressions. Okay, then you just solve as usual, and that sounds great. Maybe that's oversimplified, but will this require some distribution and then factoring again? Probably, just like we saw in that last one. I guess we didn't, I don't remember seeing any distribution that then was able to be factored, but I assume we will on this one. Uh, the third part here though, this is crucial. Make sure you check your answers and that they actually work. Um, I use a calculator for that. I hope you do as well, but if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, if you can do that stuff in your head, even better, but just be careful. So solving an, an equation containing rational expressions, it's just another way to say the same thing. Uh, multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. Again, we're gonna, going to force the denominators to match. That's all that's saying. Simplify both sides. If you can simplify, then you should, because that would be nice. Uh, determine whether the equation is linear, quadratic, or a higher degree to solve and solve accordingly. That three is just get on with it, I guess. And then four, make sure you check because, and here's why you need to check. It's because not all the solutions you find will actually make the equation a true statement. That's just how um, these, these, these equations with exponents work. So before, sometimes when we solve a, a regular linear equation, it's like, hey, x is five and we feel really good so that we don't actually check. Now, if you don't check, you're putting yourself at risk because not all, we're saying right now, not all the solutions will be solutions. Okay, now it, would, it could make it true, just usually in a different um, uh, reality, I guess is what I'll call it, because perhaps they'd be not real, perhaps. You don't have to like that, but you should. You, you definitely need to check your solutions here. So right here, we're going to solve this one. This one's nice. There's only one binomial. All right. In fact, uh, remember, the, the main thing we got to do first is to force the denominators to match. Okay, and the nice thing is, is that two of the denominators already match. The bad news is that two of the denominators don't match the other one. Maybe I'm overemphasizing that, but here's what we're going to do. What I would like is to force the letters, the variables to match first, okay? So, I got an X, I got just a four. It's missing the X, okay? So I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna take that four and multiply it by X. Now, this term does have a denominator of X, but if I do it to the denominator, I need to make sure to do it to the numerator as well. Well, that was fun, but we're not done yet because this denominator has a four, this one doesn't, neither does this one. So what I need to do there is I need to take that four and I need to multiply it by this X and also this one. Now let's do it one at a time though, okay? So the first one on the left, I multiplied the denominator by four, so I need to multiply the numerator also by four. And then the last one as well, I'll multiply that one by four. Now I'm, I'm putting the multiply by four over here just so it doesn't look like four minus one, okay? What I've done here is I forced every single denominator to match. What that means also is that we're dealing in four x. Uh, so all the sizes of these are the same. And what I can do now is I can rewrite this without any denominators. So I've got four times x plus three minus the five, five x rather, and this equals, I'm just gonna do the negative one times four, which would have been negative four. Okay, this is the equation that I'm solving now. I'm, I'm not worried about anything else. By forcing the denominators to match, you can ignore them. And if we had started with this, I think some of you guys would have been like, hey, that's pretty cool. We can do this all day long. But by starting it like this, you just had to force it to become like this, that's it. So from here, by solving this equation, what I'm looking at is just, it's an equation with one variable, by the way. So that means we would look for any distribution. I found some, because the parentheses, that's four times X, which would be four X. And then four times three, which is 12. Remember, distribution is always multiplication. And then everything else, yeah, it just, it just stayed the same there. Okay, so this is my new equation. And now after distribution, always look for any like terms to combine. 
and I got some x's that I can combine. That's 4x's minus 5x's, which would be negative 1x's. The 12 positive just drops. This still equals negative 4. Okay, now that I've done distribution and combining like terms, I can now use principles of equality to solve this. So my first principle of equality, I'm going to isolate that negative 1x. So I'd just like to be able to drop it, right? So this would then equal, uh, I got to get rid of that 12 in green. So I'm going to have to subtract 12. That means I'm going to zero it out, right? So subtract 12 on both sides. That does zero it out. Negative 4 minus 12 is negative 16. And then finally, on this one, I'm going to force the coefficient of x to become a phantom one by dividing it, the negative one coefficient by itself. If I do it to one side, I got to do it to the other side. I'm showing the division a little different. But negative 16 divided by negative 1 is positive 16. Well, that was fun. But now I've got to check, right? So I've got to go back, and I'm going to check on, on the... Uh, on the left side first, okay? So I'm gonna put a question mark above the equal sign because I'm checking for truthfulness. Remember, if by chance it becomes false, then I know it's not a solution. But this is the only solution I found. I would just say there is no solutions, which could happen, okay? So yeah, now, now I'm using the original. In fact, maybe I should rewrite it. So the original was x plus three over x minus five fourths. And then we're checking for equalness, negative one over x. But now, we're pretty sure, at least I, I'm not seeing any errors, but I'm going to take all my x's and replace those with positive 16. Now, on the right, I got negative 1 16th, um, and that's okay because we just had to replace that x. But on the left, I got, um, I got to put this in my calculator. So I got my n over d, 16 plus 3 over 16. By the way, I'm, I'm hoping very badly that this is true because if I made a mistake, we're going to have to go back and find out. But... 5 fourths, uh, minus 5 fourths, rather, I got on the left side. Again, I was checking for truthfulness. I got negative 1 16th. As far as I know, that matches, right? That's true. So now I know that I have, in fact, found the solution. So we didn't make any errors, apparently. Uh, this is the solution. Boom. In future problems, of course, is this just going to be an x? No, maybe it'll be like x minus 2 or x plus 1. Uh, and then we got to force this x plus 1 to match maybe here or both. Who knows? Now, I always, you need to meet, make sure that you're using this one in case you made any errors from here to here even. You could technically check in this one or this one or this one. But again, if, it, like if you say, well, let's see if x is negative or it, let's see if x is 16. All right, that's not very much to check. But again, you're, you're skipping some work. That's the whole idea of checking, not just to make sure that it's true, but just to make sure that you did uh uh, perform your operations correct. Now, coming back to this problem is when we look at this these original fractions, you can tell, at least in this one, right away, like from the beginning, you could have told, hey, what value, again, we're looking at the domain, what value of x wouldn't work here? Zero. If you made x zero, this fraction doesn't work, neither does this one, okay? Uh, now, that's something you could have noticed from the beginning. So if we had gotten x equals zero down here, then when we put it in, we would have gotten an in, uh, undefined value from this fraction. We didn't. Of course, I'm just kind of leading into other things, but expect that possibly to happen. That's what I'm talking about by checking. Like you may get, you could have gotten x equals zero and then checked it and said, well, that's impossible. Like you get an error in the calculator, which we don't want. One, uh, again, just from this, looking at the denominators, you could right here determine what values of x will not work in, uh, in the equation. Do you right now? I don't know. Um, let's ignore that for now, okay? We'll come back to it. So what I got here, um, I'm going to look to, I'm, I'm not even focused on the numerators here right now. I'm just looking at the denominators because if I can get the denominators to match, I can ignore all the denominators. Uh, so my 3x plus 3, I noticed that this can factor out a 3. So um, let's do that. Okay, so the denominator there is now 3 times x plus 1, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1x, one and then 3 divided by 3 is 1 because we factored out the 3. Uh, I didn't really change anything else on that, so I still have the rest of it um, like this. It's a little off, but my numerator was 6. Okay, now I, I still am not concerned about my numerators. What I am concerned about is just the denominators matching. And having factored that out, 
the three here, I can see I've got an X plus one and an X plus one. That, that means that part of those denominators, at least those parts match, right? So right off the bat, I know I'm gonna have to be multiplying by stuff, so I'm gonna put this in parentheses, just so I don't forget. But let's look at each of the denominators, see what's missing, all right? So this one has an X plus one, it's missing a two, and from this denominator, it's missing a three. So you could say you're gonna multiply by two and three there. Really, you could just multiply by six. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna keep that there though, okay? So, but if you do it to the denominator, you gotta do it to the numerator as well. And now this fraction becomes uh, three times three is nine times two is 18. 18 over, um, I'm gonna show it as six times X plus one. Okay. All right, so that's that denominator. But let's move on to this next one from the uh, minus one half right there. So I have the two, but it's missing the multiplied by three. So let's put that Why in there. That so this one, three times two, three times one, but then it's also missing the X plus one. So I gotta multiply that by X plus one. Both uh, denominator and numerator, by the way. So now my, de uh, my numerator and denominator, it's three times one, that's three. I'm gonna keep the X plus one separated for now. And then the denominator, three times two is six, and that's multiplied by X plus one. Okay, so right here, just from what we've done, and yet there's subtraction between these, but we have common denominators right here. We just need this last one to be common. So that's where, uh, and it's equal. I'm gonna multiply that three by two, so the six by two as well. So now it is 12 over, Again, we've made that two times three, that's six, and then we have the X plus one. So I've, I've kind of purposely put that in red so that we can see that these denominators all match. But because they all match, now I can rewrite this just with the numerator. So that now it's 18 minus three times X plus one. And this is gonna equal that 12. All right, so this becomes an equation to solve. And I see that I have distribution from the parentheses there, right? So I gotta distribute my negative three. Negative three times one X would be negative three X's. And negative three times positive one would be negative three. Okay, now the rest of it just drops. We got 18 minus three X minus three. This equals 12. We did distribution. Now we're looking for combining like terms. I've got 18 minus three, which is um, positive 15. So now it's negative three X plus 15 equals the 12. Cause I didn't see any other like terms to combine. And now that we've gotten to this point, I'm looking for principles of equality to isolate my X's, right? So I'm gonna subtract 15 from both sides. And that allows me to drop my negative three X's in green equals because the 15 zeroed out, 15, uh, sorry, 12 minus 15 is negative three. I think some of you guys know how this ends, but finally, we'll divide both sides by negative three, and I get phantom one X equals one. Okay, now if I've done this correct, I should be able to come back up here to the top and replace, there's only two X's there. I can replace those X's with one and see if I get a true statement, okay? So I'm gonna take that X, it's a one, and this other X, I replace it with one. Is this going to be true? So that's my question mark over the equal sign. Well, my calculator will tell me, so I do, again, you can do this in your head, but it'd be three over one plus one minus one half. Um, and I got one on the left. So the left side of the equal sign gives me one. What about the right side? Well, it's six over three times one plus three. Enter, I get one on the right side as well. That's true. One actually does equal one. And again, now I know that this actually is a solution to the original equation. Isn't it? All right, so this one, you know, of course this one's a little different. What I notice here though is x squared plus two x minus eight, I'm anticipating that this is going to factor, okay? Uh, let's set that aside though, and we'll do it, um, I'll do it below. I guess I'll do it on the side. So let's take that denominator. Let's just see if it can be factored. Oh, why am I factoring? It's because this one is already two binomials right here. I'm anticipating that this is actually gonna break up into x plus four times x minus two. Let's find out. All right, so I need two factors of negative eight that add up to two. I'm gonna choose positive four 
and negative two, boom, that works. And what happens? Well, since the leading coefficient is a phantom one, we have x terms in both binomials. And then we have a positive four and a negative two. Those are the other two terms. And yeah, what happened? We have x plus four times x minus two. That's generally the way this works. I mean, maybe in the future they're not going to match. Um, right now, since we're just getting used to this, they match, and that's that's pretty convenient, okay? So rewriting this, all right? So I'm going to take the full thing. I'm going to, again, I'm working downwards here. But now um, I'm going to take that, instead of x squared plus 2x minus 8, I'm going to cover that up, and I'm going to replace it with its factored form as x plus 4 times x minus 2, like this, all right? Now, even right here, you could say the negative 10x minus 16. You could probably factor something there. Is it going to do us any good? I don't think it will, but, but it possibly could, okay? Well, we'll come back to that later. In any case, um, this denominator has an x plus 4 and, a, and an x minus 2. What's missing then, at least from the first fraction there, the x plus 4, it's missing an x minus 2. But again, if, if I multiply it in the denominator, i got to multiply it in the numerator as well. Um, and yeah, I, I got the x on the, some people would say the wrong side. It's just a side. It's the different side. But continuing this, okay, now I've got this x minus 2, right? Well, it's missing an x plus 4 in the denominator being multiplied, so I've got to multiply this by x plus 4. Yeah, sorry, it's kind of cluttered there, but i got to do it in the numerator as well, okay? So every denominator has an x minus 2 times x plus 4 now. That allows me to rewrite this without any of the denominators. So it's now x minus 2 times the x minus the 6 times the x plus 4. Um, and this would equal negative 10x minus 16. We don't want to try to break that. Is we're not going to break this up because after I get this distributed, I'm expecting an x term that I can get that I can combine this with on the, with principles of equality. Same with a constant. Okay. I'm expecting a constant that I can combine this with. If, if I factor stuff out, I'm actually going to have to redistribute it and then do that same thing anyway. Okay, so, so, so yeah, it, hopefully that will be a little bit more clear as we move forward here. So um, let's distribute the x, right? So x times x, that would be x squared. And then x times negative 2 would be negative 2x's. So that's the first distribution. Again, this is negative 6 times x, which would be negative 6x, but also negative 6 times 4, which would be negative 24. And yep, this still equals negative 10x minus 16. Okay, is there any like terms that I can combine? Sure is. I got negative 2x's and negative 6x's, which would be negative 8x's. Okay, so I got x squared still, and then negative 24, and this still equals negative 10x minus 16. Okay, now, um, when we, we've seen this before, right, where if we have some kind of trinomial, it's nice if it equals zero, because then we can just factor this out and then figure out what factors would make that equal to zero. So that's what we're going to do, but uh, uh, we're going to force this to equal zero. I'm going to put the, the zero on the right. You could if you wanted to pull all this stuff over to the, to the right if you wanted to, but I'm going to get rid of that um, negative 10x minus 16, okay? That's a little better. So with a principle of equality. So get rid of that means I'm going to zero it out. I'm going to do two in one step here. So I'm going to take that negative 10x and add 10x. Now, since it's an x term, I'm going to combine it with the other x term on the left. That's the negative 8x's, right? Okay, now negative 8x plus 10x, that's going to get, end up being a positive 2x. Uh, and then the negative 16 also, I'm going to zero that out by adding 16 to both sides. But again, I'm adding the 16 with another like term, a constant, negative 24 there. That's going to end up being negative 8. So this is all going to equal, everything on the right just ends up being a 0. And then my x squared, nothing to combine it with, it just drops. Okay, so we're looking at this. Now I have a trinomial, but I need a little bit more space x squared oh it is isn't it thank you yeah it's the same <laughs> we've already factored it so let's not do it again although you could you know if you really enjoy that stuff 
Um, so we got the two binomials. This is going to equal zero. And we had it at uh, x plus four and also x minus two. Well, that's nice. We're not there. We're not quite there, right? So that means if I could get x plus four, if I could just get that to equal zero, that'd be really nice. So if I drop this, if I uh, can make this x equals, then x would equal negative four. Now that should be one solution. Let's check the other one. So that'd be x minus two should be zero. If I could make that zero, then it'd be true. So I'm going to take the negative two, add it to both sides. That zeroes out. I get now x equals positive two. Okay, so these this should be my two solutions. But here is a problem. Okay, in these two solutions of negative four and two, negative four is going to make this denominator zero. That's no good. Well, and by no good, that means it's not actually a solution. Okay, we can't have undefined values in our math. But also, some of you notice, well, what if you put 2 in right here? Well, that'd be 2 minus 2 in the denominator. That gives us a denominator that's 0. That can't happen. 2 also cannot be a solution. That tells us then that there are no solutions. Just a DNE situation. Now, what happens, what you could say, well, what happens if you replace the x's with negative 4? Well, you're going to get an error in your calculator if you, if you say, well, x is negative 4 here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Okay? Well, what happens if you replace x with 2 in the calculator? Put it here, 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 and here. Okay? doesn't matter. It's still going to say it's an error. The reason why it's an error, is be, and it may even say on these calculators, I think it says it's a divide by 0 error. It's saying that you have a 0 in your denominator, which cannot happen. These two values, then, are not part of the domain, which we've done before. Okay? Um, so this one, since both answers that we got, they're yeah, they're, they're not actually solutions. And again, yeah, we, we are assuming that I did all the math here correct. It looks good to me, but that should be the solution. The, our final answer here is no solutions. It does not exist. Here's this one. Yes. Not, yeah. Exciting. So exciting. Well, from here, I'll work my way down. So I'm going to take that, again, I'm going to take that trinomial here. I'm assuming that it will factor. And I think you guys know how this ends because we just saw one similar to it. But um, I got a leading coefficient that is 1. So I'm expecting x terms in both binomials from this factorization. I just need two factors of 24 that add up to 11. Guess what? It's 3 and 8. Now I'm saying that sarcastically because, remember, this was x plus 3, x plus 8. We kind of anticipated this would end up being x plus 3 and x plus 8, which it does. Okay. Uh, why did we anticipate that? Because they shouldn't be giving us stuff that's super complicated yet. So we anticipated, hey, they, they're not going to make us go too far on this. Only on the test. Only on the test, yes, or the, <laughs> or the written quizzes. So I'm going to drop this and then uh, my, my denominator, right? I went ahead and um, factored that out. So let's replace that then with an x plus 3 times an x plus 8. Now, could this numerator be factored? It's kind of like that last problem. I'm not going to factor it yet in case I need to move that stuff over so that I can make this equal to 0. But here I can see that I've, uh, the other two denominators, right? I've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 8. I, I'm planning to work with these, so I'm putting them in parentheses now so I don't forget about it, okay? But like this, this denominator right here, x plus 3, it doesn't have the x plus 8 multiplied by it like it does over here. This x plus 8, I'm not worried about that. I'm just worried on this this denominator right there. So the x plus 3, I'm going to take it and multiply it by x plus 8. But if I do it to the denominator, I need to do it to the numerator as well. Okay, and if I had more space, I'd, I'd write it on this side just so it matches everywhere, but whatever. Okay, now I have that denominator of x plus 8 times x plus 3, same as this one, just in a different order, and that's fine. But now I've got to take this other one. It's x plus 8. I need to multiply it by x plus 3. But if I multiply it in the denominator, i got to multiply it in the numerator as well. And from here, I can see in my numerator, it's going to be x times x. That's an x squared. So I'm, I, I am anticipating a trinomial somewhere in the end here. But since, since the denominators match, every denominator has an x plus 8 times an x plus 3. Even if the order is changed, I now get to rewrite this without any denominator. So I've got an x plus 8 times 2 plus an x 
times x plus 3. And this would equal then the negative 4x minus 4. Well, this is nice because we have two distributions on this, right? Uh, so we got the 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 8, which is positive 16. Also, we can distribute this positive x. Positive x times x is positive x squared. And x times 3 would be positive 3x's. And this still equals negative 4x minus 4. Okay, that's nice. Let's go ahead and start combining some like terms. Uh, I may even move some stuff around, okay? So I'm, I'm looking at the 2x's and the 3x's right there. That would combine into 5x's. Now, again, I'm going to shift the order so it looks like a regular trinomial for us. That's a positive 5x, by the way. But I'm going to put the x squared as the first term and then the positive 16 constant as the last term in that uh, trinomial. Of course, this still equals negative 4x minus 4. All right, from here, let's go ahead and use some principles of equality to solve. So uh, the negative 4x on the right, I want this to equal 0 in the end. I'd like this just to equal 0. So the negative 4x, I'm going to add 4x as the both sides. Again, make sure you're combining these with like terms. So don't, don't take the 4x and add it to the x squareds right there. So 5x's plus 4x's would be positive 9x's. And then also the 4, right? I can take that and add 4 to both sides. Right, that zeroes these out as planned, and then 16 plus 4 would be positive 20. So I now have x squared plus 9x plus 20. This one, well, it doesn't quite match the original um, uh, trinomial like the last problem did, but that's okay. So I'm going to take that trinomial, x squared plus 9x plus 20. I'm going to look to factor it, but since that leading coefficient is already... A phantom 1, I know it's going to be x and x in the binomials, okay? So what two factors of 20 add up to 9? 5 and 4. 5 times 4 is 20, but 5 plus 4 is 9. So I got a positive 5 and a positive 4. Okay, so my trinomial now factors out into x plus 5 times x plus 4. And again, the order doesn't matter. If you did x plus 4 times x plus 5, you're going to get the same, same exact answer. A little bit more space here just to end this. So if I could get that x plus 5 in that parentheses to equal 0, then the equation would be true. So solving this by subtracting 5 from both sides, x equals negative 5. But also the x plus 4. If I could get that to equal 0, then I'd get a true statement. So subtract 4 from both sides. And then x equals negative 4. Okay. Ah, well, we got two answers. Um, I don't see any problems with the denominators, right? Like, if you replace x's with negative 5, that's okay. We won't get any zeros. If you replace x with negative 4, again, no zeros. So we do need to check these in the original equation. All right, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to move it over here, though, so I can actually do some work. But I'm going to start with x is negative 5. Okay, so there's a lot of x's. No problem, because the calculator is going to do all this work for me. I'm going to write it in just so I don't miss anything either. A lot of negative 5 and a negative 5 uh, and then a negative 5. Now, in typing in the, in this into the calculator, see this x squared? I got this negative 5 in parentheses. The other ones don't really matter so much, but this one does. If you don't put this negative 5 in parentheses, the calculator is going to it's gonna do it correctly, but it, it's, it's going to give you the wrong answer because you typed it in wrong. Make sure you use parentheses there. I am checking for truthfulness, though. There's my question mark. So uh, n over d, 2 over negative 5 plus 3, get out of that fraction, plus n over d, negative 5 over negative 5 plus 8, enter. And on the left side, it gives me negative 8 thirds. Okay, let's try the right side. So negative 4 times negative 5. I need that in a fraction. So n over d, negative 4 times negative 5 minus 4. Now the denominator, uh, again, negative 5 in parentheses squared plus 11 times negative 5 plus 24. Enter, and you'll never guess what I got. Neg eight negative 8 thirds. How I great is that? Bad. I believe it. That's impressive. That is. So, <laughs> this is true, though. 
And it's good that it's true because now at least this, this one answer that we got, right? I know that this is a solution. So I'm going to box that in. Uh, and as fun as that was, let's do it again because uh, we, got a, we got a second solution on this one. Here we go. So I'm going to replace those uh, x's with neg uh, negative 4's this time. So on the, on the left, that's negative 4, right? So n over d, 2 over negative 4 plus 3. Get out of the parentheses, plus n over d, negative 4 over negative 4 plus 8. Enter. Oh, on the left, we got a whole value. That's kind of surprised me. Negative 3. All right, what about the right side? n over d, negative 4 times negative 4 minus 4 all over again negative 4 in parentheses squared plus 11 times negative 4 plus 24 enter and you know even before i pushed enter i was anticipating this showing as negative 3 uh, and it does thank goodness uh, if it was false then i would know that that's um it would just wouldn't be a solution or perhaps maybe i made a mistake somewhere uh, so the fact that this is true is nice because i can just box that in and i now have two solutions and we check both of them, and they both work. I feel good about that. All right, for this one, um, well, we want to factor out anything that we can. And again, I'm expecting this trinomial to factor out into x plus 2 times x minus 4. But let's just double check, okay? So, uh, you know, let's give ourselves some space here. So let's take that, put it over here so we can start working with it. But now that I got it separated, I know I got a, a coefficient of x that's a phantom one, so I'm gonna take the negative eight, find two factors of negative eight that add up to negative two, and that would have to be negative four and positive two. So again, negative four times two is negative eight, but negative four plus two is negative two. That's the whole point. And then we take this shortcut, I've got factor of negative four and positive two. So it, it did, it did exactly what I thought it would. This factors into x minus 4 times x plus 2. Now, that's pretty good. Okay, so we can take this whole equation. Let's rewrite it. Okay, but now, instead of having that um, x squared minus 2x minus 8, let's go ahead and cover that up. Okay, and we have what we found, which was that it, it, it factored into x minus 4 times x plus 2. So that's pretty good, right? But before we proceed, you'll want to notice, well, I look at this and I think, well, I can factor here. Actually, I don't think that's going to help us, okay? So I'm going to actually proceed, even though this can be factored and you may want to factor, I'm not going to do that yet, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to force all of the denominators to have to be the same, right? So for example, this denominator has x minus 4 and x plus 2. Uh, this one right here, has x plus 2, but it's missing an x minus 4. Okay, so I got I to gotta apply it both to the denominator and numerator. Okay, now again, once we get those denominators to be the same, we can ignore them. But even over here on the right, I've got the x minus 4, but it's missing an x, mi uh, x plus 2, rather. So I've got to multiply the numerator also by x plus 2. Now, having done no more work here, um, I have matching denominators, and they're even the same order. That's convenient here. But the denominators are all the same. That means I can rewrite this without any denominators. All right, so I kind of used some technology to help me, but you, you, hopefully we can see the importance of, of um, not factoring out a 2 from this part of the expression. Now, the way I have it, I've purposely written this incorrectly because what you're going to want here is parentheses around the 2x minus 38 because it was subtraction. Remember, with subtraction of these expressions, it's kind of like, we're going to have to distribute a negative 1 there. Now, first, though, I do have this x that I must distribute. So I've got x times x, which is x squared, x times negative 4, which would be negative 4x's. And now I'll distribute the negative 1 times first the 2x, which is negative 2x. And then negative 1 times negative 38 is positive 38. Then on the right side of the equal sign, okay, we got to distribute this 5. 5 times x is 5x. And then 5 times positive 2 would be positive 10. So these two equations are equal. It would be nice to make it equal 0. Uh, but even before that, I mean, whether you do it now or later, 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and combine these like terms. I got the x's right there. Negative 4x's minus 2x's is negative 6x's. Everything else stays the same here. So this is what I got. You can condense it over here if you want, but I'm going to keep it here. Now that I have that, um, I go to a principle of equality. Um, and it looks like I got to get rid of those 5x's, right? So I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 5x's rather. Now, where do we put the minus 5x over here? It's with it's an x term, so you got to keep it with the x's. Uh, and we see that that, that will be important in um, 5.6, okay? So I'm subtracting my 5x's there. That zeroes those out as planned. But the 10 as well, I'm gonna, I want to zero that out as well. So subtract 10 from both sides. So what am I left with? Well, the x squared gets the drop. Negative 6x's minus 5x's would be negative 11x's. And then 38 minus 10 is going to be negative um, 28. Okay, but now this all equals a zero. Okay, because the uh, the 10s also that zeroed out too. Now from here we're just looking to factor out the negative 28, and uh, there we're looking for two factors of negative 28 that add up to negative 11. So that appears to be. Um, I was thinking 7 and 4, but only one of them can be negative. So that's not going to do. Uh, okay. Uh, what about, so 1 and 28 don't work. 2 and 14 is close, but it doesn't work. So uh, not divisible by 3, but 4 and 7. It seems like it should work. Oh, here we go. I found it. Uh, 38 minus 10 is positive 28. So that 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 now will work. Um, again, these multiplied together and then added is going to be positive, but I can make both those negative, okay? So that's good news. A little bit of a mistake, but it's still good news that we can't do it. So uh, the leading coefficient is 1, so I got x and then a negative 4 and then also a negative 7. Again, if, if uh, this would equal 0, then it means that in solving for these both the solutions uh, I would solve them both so I'd say if if that x minus 4 if I could make it equal 0 then I'd get a true statement so I would add 4 to both sides and I would find that x could equal 4 uh, and then on the other hand I got x minus 7 if I could get that to equal 0 it'd be true so I'd add 7 to both sides and I'd get x equals 7 now are these true though remember the thing we need to remember on these is that you need to check uh, from the original e the original equation, right? So I, I'm going to take this original. I'm going to start with x equals 4. So I'm going to take all the x's and replace them with 4. So it's positive, so I don't really need parentheses around these. So you have this one being multiplied. Okay, and then I'm, I am checking for truthfulness here. Now, before I proceed, the one thing that I noticed right at the end is that this is going to be 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. That can't happen. It's undefined. Uh, so it looks like 4 is not actually going to be one of the solutions there. All right. So that was just checking the 4. Uh, on the left side, you may have gotten an answer. It doesn't really matter. In fact, I don't think you will because um, that'd be 16 minus 8 minus 8. That's going to be 0 on this denominator as well. Uh, so next, I've got to go in, and I've got to replace the x's now with 7s. Right, so there's 7, 7 here. Uh, again, I'm putting those 7 in parentheses because they're being multiplied. Even the 7 to the power of 2, I don't really mind. If it's negative, then I would need parentheses there. Uh, let's see what we'll get. Okay, so I, I don't see any problems with having a 7 in the denominator. If it was a negative 2, that would be a problem on this one, or even this one. Let's see what we'll get. 7, n over d, uh, 7 plus 2, minus, again, n, n over d, uh, 2 times 7 minus 38, all over 7 squared minus 2 times 7 minus 8. Enter. All right, well, I got something here. So again, is this true? On the left, I got 5 thirds. On the left, I, uh, on the right side, rather, I can see 7 minus 4 is going to be 3. So yeah, that's true. All right, well, that's nice because that means we did actually find one solution. Was the other one true? It wasn't. But it didn't matter. So this one, again, the, the 4 didn't work because one of the denominators was 0. And that's okay if that, if that happens. What you don't want to see is that 
you just have an untrue statement here. If that happens, then usually that means somewhere in this problem you've made a mistake, which can happen as well. Uh, so yeah, one of the students, they did this. Uh, somewhere in here they made some mistakes, and so they just found that one of the values was false. They did find this one was true, so somewhere there was a mistake that allowed this 7 to happen, but uh, right here I think they got a negative 4, uh, again, which would just produce an untrue statement. But the zero denominator, when it's positive four, that's that's where it, um, it, it may have been a similar mistake like right here, right? Remember how he wrote negative 28? Um, because I, well, I just didn't carry, I didn't have it as positive 28, okay? So expect yourself to make some mistakes. Uh, be lenient with yourself, but always double check your work, just like I did, right? Like nothing was working here with my the four and seven when I was a negative 28. Okay, I went back and I checked. Yeah, I made a mistake there. Expect to make mistakes. Expect to learn from them and uh, move forward. Okay, we can learn from those.